Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane, Australia with another uncut, unedited, no bull video. Today is my final video of a series how to achieve your health goal or goals. Um, I'm not covering everything that I want to cover, but I would like to create a series of these videos to instigate questions, to instigate um, thought of what works and doesn't work for you and why. And today I would like to dedicate, uh, today's video I would like to dedicate to exercise and the ways to exercise for weight loss. So first of all, I would like to make clear that there are different exercises for cardio benefits, for overall health benefits or for weight loss. I will focus today mostly on weight loss and briefly mention other benefits. To start with the weight loss, I would like to quickly recap why we gain in weight so we understand how to lose weight. So out of everything that we eat, there's a three nutritional, I guess, compositions uh, in our food, which are fats, proteins and carbohydrates. They affect us differently and also whether we eat them together or separately affect us differently. Today I would like to briefly simplify everything and say if you eat fats that don't store as fat, they um, just go and do what they need to do. But if you eat fats as 100% fat separately and you don't overeat it, it's quite alright as long as it's a healthy fat. If you overeat protein, protein will be broken down into amino acids and will spike your insulin and insulin is a hormone that will store excess of food. When I say overeat protein, you can overeat it in two different types. First type is you take a pure protein and you consume more than you're supposed to. I'll probably refer mostly to a protein shake, especially uh, shakes concentrates which is not recommended to consume if you already decide to consume your shake make sure that you, you consume protein isolate and no flavored but if there's a no need in the quantity of protein in your body it will be broken into amino acid and will spike your insulin and it will be broken down to glucose and most likely stored so be careful how you consume your protein and shakes protein from food would be great if you ensure that you consume your food half protein and half fat for example if you get cut off meat do not strip fat because you don't want to isolate the protein it's quite healthy everything besides the chicken that has omega-6 rich fats are in skin to have your fats and proteins together so any cut of meat that you consume or any other food that would consume naturally proteins and fat together, try not to strip fat. And that will ensure that you absorb protein. The second important bit to absorb protein is the need for protein. We need need for protein as rebuilding our building blocks, our muscles and, and everything else. So you need to exercise, need to move, not necessarily exercise, but you need to move to create a need for protein and amino acids. And last one is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are the only uh, nutritional bit that is not totally required for um, to sustain life. So I encourage you not to consume carbs at all, or if you consume, make sure that you consume carbs that are with low GI and they are rich in fiber. And never consume fi fi uh, carbs and fats together. A uh, good perfect example would be ice cream. You've got sugar and milk solids that are uh, uh, carbohydrates and you've got uh, uh, milk fats that are fat and cream and when you consume it together um, the cell opens up and fills up with things that will be stored for later. Enough of brief nutrition, let's talk about exercise. Every type of exercise will consume different energy stores within us. We're not the system that requires like cars to put fuel in to drive. The way human um, body works, we consume food that most likely stores in different 
compartments and then we tap into those compartments to use them. The fastest and easiest compartment is glucose or if it's still in the blood or glycogen if it's in the muscles. So the body will consume glucose and glycogen first because it's easy to break down because uh, body likes it, but that's not the best way to use your energy. And also we've got uh, uh, lipids or fats within uh, a bloodstream or stored as a fat tissue to be tapped in and used as an energy as well. And that is body's preferred method of, uh, of energy because it's abandoned. We've got always enough fat and us unless we're super lean and i believe if you accidentally stumble upon this channel you're not that lean that you don't have any fat deposits when i say lean i'm talking about five and less percent body fat that's where body try to go into preservation mode so for example if you look at me um i'm not sure uh, if you can see my uh, at least uh, upper body composition i'm currently 11 percent body fat so most of the people that I know, even leanest that I know, they 8% and more. There's enough for to sustain um, life more than a month without consuming food. However, it's not easy to tap into that fat storage. And there's a certain conditions need to be met to do so. The first is a nutritional condition. Unless you deplete yourself from glucose and some glycogen stores, body will prefer glucose because it's like very easy combusting fuel. So if you got glucose in your body, you will never tap into a subcutaneous or organ or further on organs. Um, and that's the problem. Many people that are trying to lose weight they eat little portions they on a diet and they do fast exercises none of that will help you to lose weight it will help you to feel food deprived and you will be in starvation mode it's exactly opposite from what you really need so i encourage you to eat very nutritional very rich food when i say rich it's rich in minerals and vitamins very satisfying food full you know normal meals and have big gaps between meals so when you're not eating and you're not storing anymore your body because you keep you need energy for vital organs you need energy for maintaining body temperature and other other processes in the body so your body will start running out of glucose in the, in the, in the bloodstream and this is where you need to keep going without food and train your body to start tapping into reserves of uh, fats so if you exercising with exercise that requires a lot of energy your heart rate will go up and when your heart rate approximately above 120 beats per minute that's where body need fastest burning fuel which is glucose so if you would like to lose fat, the best exercise to start with and continue with would be moderate walk. Walk daily for an hour or more if you can afford and you will see your sleep is improving, your, your weight is improving and it's the best exercise for fat loss. Not running, not jumping, no squats, no burpees, just normal moderate walk. If you're lifting, make sure you lift slowly and lift heavily without losing form and that should ensure that you're losing fat for energy too and you will see if you're not using glucose you have enough energy in you to sustain because you've got so much fat in you so energy will be constant top up and you will never run out of it and it will suppress your appetite too so to recap this video first of all no glucose in the bloodstream Gaps between food consumption ideally will be intermittent fasting or intermittent eating. And when you exercise, very slow paced, challenging exercise or moderate exercise if you just before going to sleep, like walking, and that will tap in, into your energy resources. That is my final video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any, any other ideas about videos that I can record to help you with your nutrition or health goals, 
please let me know. For now, until next time, Greg from Brisbane, Australia, goodbye.